this sacred Monday Thursday. The lesson is taken from the Gospel of John, chapter 13, beginning at the first verse. Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart out of this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. During supper, when the devil had already put it into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given 
all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going back to God, rose from supper. He laid aside his outer garments, and taking a towel, tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, do you wash my feet? Jesus answered him, What I am doing you do not understand now, but afterward you will understand. Peter said to him, You shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I do not wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also wash my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, The one who has bathed does not need to wash except for his feet, but is completely cleaned, and you are clean, but not every one of you, for he knew who was to betray him. That was why he said, Not all of you are clean. When he had washed their feet and put on his outer garments and resumed his place, he said to them, Do you understand what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet, for I have given you an example that you also should do, just as I have done for you. The word of the Lord. Fellow servants of our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night before his death, Jesus set an example for his disciples by washing their feet, an act of humble service. He taught that strength and growth in the life of the kingdom of God comes not by power, authority, or even miracle, but by such lowly service. Therefore, I invite you who have been appointed as representatives of the congregation and who share in the royal priesthood of Christ to come forward, that I may recall whose servant I am by following the example of my master. But come remembering his admonition that what will be done for you is also to be done by you to others. For a servant is not greater than his master, nor is one who is sent greater than the one who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. Along with the invitation for the coming forth, and I invite those who will be receiving the washing of their feet to fill these pews here, the front pews, and uh, we, open, uh, we open the invitation to everybody in the congregation to come and have their hands washed. I know not everybody wants to have their feet washed, but I think it's maybe a, a le less invasive uh, if you come and have your hands washed. And Reverend Ann is, uh, is, uh, is going to be presiding over the, uh, the, wash, the, the washing basin for hands. As we sing God's praise. So I invite those who are going to receive the washing of their feet to come forward, please. Simultaneous to have his hands washing as well.
turn to our intercessory prayers. Father, on this, the night he was betrayed, thy Son, Jesus Christ, washed his disciples' feet. We commit ourselves to follow his example of love and service. Lord, hear us and humble us. On this night, he prayed for his disciples to be one. We pray for the unity of thy church. Lord, hear us and unite us. On this night, he prayed for those who were to believe through their message. We pray for the mission of thy church. Lord, hear us and renew our zeal. On this night, he commanded them to love, but suffered rejection himself. We pray for the rejected and unloved. Lord, hear us and fill us with thy love. On this night, he reminded them that if the world hated them, it hated him first. We pray for those who are persecuted for their faith and for all prisoners of conscience. Lord, hear us and give us that peace. Amen. Proper's call it Epistle and Gospel for Monday, Thursday, beginning on page 169. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who of thy tender love towards mankind has sent thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, to take upon him our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross, that all mankind should follow the example of his great humility. Mercifully grant that we may both follow the example of his patience and also be made partakers of his resurrection through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. O God, who in a wonderful sacrament has left unto us a memorial of thy passion, Grant us so to reverence the holy mysteries of thy body and blood, that we may ever know within ourselves the fruit of thy redemption, who livest and reignest with the Father in the unity of the Holy Ghost, one God, world without end. Amen. Amen. The lesson is from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, beginning at the 23rd verse. For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Whoever therefore eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty concerning the body and blood of the Lord. Let a person examine himself then, and so to eat the bread and drink of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body eats and drinks judgment on himself. The word of the Lord. The continuation of the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Luke. Glory be to thee, o Lord. The whole multitude. 
multitude of them arose and led him unto Pilate. And they began to accuse him, saying, We found this fellow perverting the nation and forbidding to give tribute to Caesar, saying that he himself is Christ, a king. And Pilate asked him, saying, Art thou the king of the Jews? And he answered him and said, Thou sayest it. Then said Pilate to the chief priests and to the people, I find no fault in this man. And they were the more fierce, saying, He stirreth up the people, teaching throughout all Jewry, beginning from Galilee to this place. When Pilate heard of Galilee, he asked whether the man were a Galilean. And as soon as he knew that he belonged unto Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod, who himself was also at Jerusalem at that time. And when Herod saw Jesus, he was exceeding glad, for he was desirous to see him of a long season, because he had heard many things of him, and he hoped to have seen some miracle done by him. Then he questioned with him in many words, but he answered him nothing. And the chief priests and scribes stood and vehemently accused him. And Herod, with his men of war, set him at naught, and mocked him, and arrayed him in a gorgeous robe, and sent him again to Pilate. And the same day Pilate and Herod were made friends together, for before they were at enmity between themselves. And Pilate, when he had called together the chief priests and the rulers of the people, and said unto them, Ye have brought this man unto me, as one that perverteth the people. And behold, I, having examined him before you, have found no fault in this man, touching those things whereof ye accuse him. Neither hath Herod, for he sent him back to us. Behold, nothing worthy of death hath been done by him. I will therefore chastise him, and release him. And they cried out all together, saying, Away with this man, and release unto us Barabbas, who for a certain sedition made in the city, and for murder, was cast into prison. Pilate, therefore, willing to release Jesus, spake again to them. But they cried, saying, Crucify him, crucify him. And he said unto them the third time, Why? What evil hath he done? I have found no cause of death in him. I will therefore chastise him and let him go. And they were instant with loud voices, requiring that he might be crucified, and their voices prevailed. And Pilate gave sentence that it should be as they required. And he released unto them him that for sedition and murder was cast into prison. Whom they had desired, but he delivered Jesus to their will. And as they led him away, they laid hold upon one Simon, a Cyrenian, coming out of the country, and on him they laid the cross, that he might bear it after Jesus. And there followed him a great company of people and of women, which also bewailed and lamented him. But Jesus, turning unto them, said, Daughters of Jerusalem, weep not for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For behold, the days are coming in the which they shall say, Blessed are the barren, and the wombs that never bear, and the breasts which never gave suck. Then shall they begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. For if they do these things in a green tree, what shall be done in the dry? And there were also two others, malefactors, led with him to be put to death. And when they were come to the place which is called Calvary, there they crucified him, and the malefactors, one on the right hand and the other on the left. Then said Jesus, 
Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment and cast lots. And the people stood beholding, and the rulers also with them derided him, saying, He saved others, let him save himself, if he be the Christ, the chosen one of God. And the soldiers also mocked him, coming to him and offering him vinegar and saying, If thou be the king of the Jews, save thyself. And a superscription also was written over him in letters of Greek and Latin and Hebrew. This is the king of the Jews. And one of the malefactors, which were hanged, railed on him, saying, If thou be the Christ, save thyself and us. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Dost not thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man hath done nothing amiss. And he said, Jesus, remember me when thou comest in thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. And it was about the sixth hour, and there was a darkness over all the land until the ninth hour, the sun's light failing. And the veil of the temple was rent in the midst. And when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And having said thus, he gave up the spirit. Now when the centurion saw what was done, he glorified God, saying, Certainly this was a righteous man. And all the people that came together to that sight, beholding the things that were done, smote their breasts and returned. And all his acquaintance, and the women that followed him from Galilee, stood afar off, beholding these things. The Gospel of Christ. And on page 71, let us profess our faith in the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, God the Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, God to not be, being of one substance with the Father, through whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate of the Holy Ghost as Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us in her conscious Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sit upon the right hand of God. He shall come again in glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeded from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy Catholic. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for his resurrection of the dead, and I the Lord of God. Amen. Father, may the words of my mouth, the meditations of our hearts, be most acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. I, I know I've said it many times before, but uh, my trip to the Holy Land, uh, the summer just before COVID-19 all started, summer of uh, 2019, is just uh, so many images in my mind from that trip. And one of the images that I have is the, the holy place, the sanctuary where it was believed that Jesus broke bread with the disciples 
on the night before he was handed over unto death. And I remember in that beautiful sanctuary, there were pillars, and on these pillars were pelicans. I thought, well, what on earth are pelicans doing on these pillars in this holy place? And you probably know the answer. A pelican is one who would rip her flesh to give it to her babes, right? So, um, of course, uh, that makes perfect sense that that would mark this sacred place, the place where Jesus would give his flesh for us. And that, that sacred meal would become our spiritual food, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, nurturing us, body, mind, and soul. And it was there in that sacred place, if that is in fact the place where this all happened, and many believe that it, that it is the place, um, Jesus is there with the disciples, and he does something completely unexpected. Here, their master, their rabbi, their teacher, their savior, he bows down before him, them at that table, the disciples, and he takes off the outer part of his garment and he wraps the towel around his waist and he stoops low and he begins washing their dirty, grubby feet. The task that only a slave would do. And here Jesus, the master, is performing the duty of a slave. Not, not just to all the disciples, but in particular to Judas, who would betray him, and he knew it, and to, Jesus, and to Peter, who would deny him three times, and Jesus knew it. And yet, he served so lowly, so humbly, and was demonstrating his commission to all his people. As I have done to you, so you do, Jesus says, to one another. It is the commandment to love. And of course, Monday Thursday uh, gets its name from the Latin mandatum, an English mandate, which is the commandment. The commandment to do what? The commandment to love. Jesus commands us to love. It is not optional for God's people to love. It is a commandment of the Lord. What does that mean? It means that we give ourselves even when we don't feel like it. There's a beautiful story. I, I've told the story before. It's a beautiful story. Um, William Gladstone was a member of the British Parliament back in the mid-1800s. Eight, and in the Parliament, he had to announce the death of Princess Alice. And he had to give the reasons for her death. And apparently what happened was Princess uh, Alice had this dear uh, toddler who uh, was stricken with diphtheria. And the doctors warned, Mom, <laughs> Princess Alice, do not, do not, whatever you do, come in close contact with the breath of your child, or it will be fatal. Well, here her little one was, was, was dying. And her last wish was, Mommy, Mommy, kiss me. What's a mother gonna do? So Princess Alice stooped down and she kissed her little one. The little one died and eventually Princess Alice caught the diphtheria and passed away as well. Real love. A real love that thinks not of oneself, but thinks of the other. That is agape love. That is the love I believe that Jesus was talking about, giving us the commandment to love. To love when it's not convenient. To love when it's not easy. I remember, um, you know, sometimes I'd be out late and I'd get back and kids were doing their homework and oh my dear, they needed a piece of Bristol board at Walmart. The last thing at nine o'clock at night after a long day I felt like doing was going to Walmart to buy a piece of Bristol port. And I'm not saying I got this love thing 
nailed. Far, far from it. Far from it. But I'll tell you, I did what I didn't feel like doing. <laughs> I did what I didn't feel like doing. Love is a choice. Love is a choice. The culture doesn't get that. The culture sees love in what way? Well, it's sentimental. If I'm feeling it, great. If I'm not feeling it, too bad. Right? It's all based on feeling and fluff. But the love of God is a choice. I will love you. I choose to love you no matter what. But can you imagine what the world would look like if that kicked in for every person? If every single human being did what Jesus commands us to do? Can you imagine what kind of world we would be living in right now? I dare say it would not be a world unhinged, but I believe that it would be a world of healing, uh, a love where people wouldn't have to lock their doors at night. You wouldn't have to worry where you walked at night and down some dark alley or whatever. You wouldn't, it wouldn't matter because people would understand this love of Christ. That's our prayer. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have eternal life. That more and more people as they come to know Christ would, would, would get that love. And that you and I here tonight and the whole church of God would step up in whatever way possible and demonstrate that love of Christ to others even when it's not convenient. Even to our enemies. To love one another as I have loved you, says Jesus. Let us pray. Father, work in our hearts, we pray. Lord, stir up in our hearts such love of Christ that we would be obedient to your commandment, Lord Jesus, to love others as you love us, even when it's inconvenient even when it's so difficult, even when it involves our enemies. Lord, may we be people of the cross. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's stand and uh, sing God's praises. Hymn 475 in the Blue Hymn Book. The first five verses. The first five verses, hymn 475. Thank you.
Let us pray for the worldwide Church of God, and especially in the very, very difficult parts of the world in Ukraine. We pray that the Church of God would be a real beacon of light and hope to people who are losing hope. Let us pray for peace on earth, peace in Ukraine, and peace in all troubled areas of the world, and for the unity of all Christian people. Let us pray for our missionaries at home and abroad. Let us remember before God those of our brethren who have departed this life and are at rest. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ Church militant here in earth. Almighty and everlasting God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all people. We humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and oblations and to receive these our prayers, which we offer under thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord. And grant that all they that do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also to lead all nations in the way of righteousness and so to guide and direct their governors and rulers, that thy people may enjoy the blessings of freedom and peace. And grant unto thy servant Elizabeth our Queen and to all that are put in authority under her that they may truly and impartially administer justice to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops, priests, and deacons, especially to thy servant David, our Metropolitan, and our Bishop, that, he may, that they may both, but he may both by his life and doctrine set forth thy true and living word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. Prosper, we pray thee, all those who proclaim the gospel of thy kingdom among the nations, and to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all them who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity especially those for whom our prayers are desired. We pray in our own parish for Paul Vandenbroek. We pray for Ruth Durley, for Bill, Susan, and Debbie Fitzpatrick. We pray for Sherman LaPointe. We pray for Shirley McDonald. Pray for others, Lord, known to us as we lift, lift them up by name. Pray for Ronnie Holland. And Lord, we pray for the bereaved. We pray for the family of the late Jonathan Springthorpe, who passed away suddenly last night. And God bless the parish of the Good Shepherd. We remember before thee, O Lord, all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear. And we bless thy holy name for all who in life and death have glorified thee, beseeching thee to give us grace that rejoicing in their fellowship we may follow their good examples and with them be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Ye that do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbors, and intend to lead the new life, following the commandments of God, and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith, and take this holy sacrament to your comfort, and make your humble confession to Almighty God, meekly kneeling upon your knees. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed. By God, word and deed, against thy divine majesty, we do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. Have mercy upon us.
Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Savior Christ saith, and to all that truly turn to him, come unto me all that labor and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish but have eternal life. Hear also what St. Paul saith. This is a true saying and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John saith. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he is the propitiation, the perfect offering for our sins. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto the O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God, Creator and Preserver of all things. For the redemption of the world by the death and passion of our Savior Christ, both God and man, who did humble himself even to the death upon the cross for us sinners, who lay in darkness in the shadow of death, that he might make us the children of God and exalt us to everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, <clears throat> Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessing and glory and thanksgiving be unto the Almighty God, our Heavenly Father who of thy tender mercy did give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memorial that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he break it and gave it to his disciples saying take eat this is my body which is given for you do this in remembrance of me likewise after supper he took the cup and when he had given thanks he gave it to them saying drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, we thy humble servants with all thy holy church, remembering the precious death of thy beloved Son, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again in glory, do make before thee in this sacrament of the holy bread of eternal life and the cup of everlasting salvation, the memorial which he hath commanded, 
and we entirely desire thy fatherly goodness. Mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And we pray that by the power of thy Holy Spirit, all we who are partakers of this Holy Communion may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs into thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be cleaned by his body, and our souls washed with his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Amen. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, Grant us thy peace. We invite all who know and love the Lord Jesus Christ and have been baptized in his name, regardless of Christian denomination or background, we invite you to come and partake in the Lord's Supper here this evening.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus. service continues on page 85. Let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank Thee that Thou dost graciously feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of Thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, assuring us thereby of Thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are living members of His mystical body, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of Thy everlasting kingdom. And here we offer and present to Thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee. And although we are unworthy, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but parting our offenses. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. And the peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God. And of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Before we have our recessional hymn, I would ask if you're able, uh, following the recessional hymn, to remain uh, prayerful in your pew as we, the lights go out, the sanctuary is stripped, and of course that reminds us of the stripping of our Savior uh, before he was nailed to the cross. So if you're able to stay, uh, please do. The hymn number is, go to Gar Dark Gethsemane, and I'm not sure what the hymn number is. 132, God bless you, 132. Go to dark Gethsemane as we stand and sing God's praises. Mm -hmm. 